Look, so I'm about to give y'all part two of breaking free from witches. And I was talking about how it could start in your family. Somebody also mentioned in the workplace, and that's so true. Because like when I was telling y'all, when God has anointed you heavily, and you are the chosen one that's coming to break generational curses, it's going to be harder on you. But let me um clarify a few things from my first video. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. So when I talk when I talk about witches, I'm not talking about what comes to your mind. Usually when you hear when you hear the word witch you think of a woman it's not always a woman it could be a man but i'm not talking about just people that there's witches that have spell books or they uh have uh voodoo dolls i'm not talking about that i'm talking about people that's just like your aunts your uncles your cousins they don't have none of that stuff what they have is their mouth they always speaking on your life. That's what I mean by those witches. See, you, that's why you don't never notice them. They don't look like what you think they what a witch looks like. And that's why a lot of people be missing it because they just look regular. They dress nice. It's like their uncle that he got, you know, dressed nice. So, you know, just casual. But what you notice, his mouth always speaks death. Think about when the Bible says life and death is in the power of the what? The tongue. That is very important. You got to always keep that in mind why God let you know that. You understand what I'm saying? So let me let me uh, give you a story on, you know, just what it looks like. Because like I said, a lot of family have that generational curse where can't nobody get out. Everybody just going through that same cycle in that mud. You know what I'm saying? It's called a hindering spirit. See, and that's, and that's what Satan will use. That. See, Satan will also use fear to paralyze a lot of them. And that's how they end up start speaking death. It ain't called negativity. It's called death. Because if you ain't speaking life, what you speaking? Come on, you speaking death. But let me give y'all a story and paint a picture of what it looked like. Now, I told the story before, but I'm going to tell it again. It was about my homeboy. So my homeboy, I had a childhood friend that come around every once in a while. We'd get up and he seen my brand. He was like, man, this, you know, this dope. I love this. So I started coming up with ideas because there are things he want to do, too. So I started coming up with ideas of something that he can do. So we was just brainstorming on the laptop. He was like, man, this is exciting. You know, I appreciate you. So we was on the phone one day finishing up some work. And I was like, you know, you could come out with a, a, a fragrance or like a man line, like some shoes. And when I tell you, when I was just speaking life in him, he was getting so excited. It was like that little boy that was crippled down with inside of him because he's in his 30s. That little boy was starting to, you know, uh, live again. That didn't get a chance to live. So when I was, we were talking about all this stuff, he got so excited. He ran to his uncle. He was like, oh, man, my homegirl, man, she's so good, man. Look, she was telling me I can do this I'm about to get in the cologne and I can do this and I can do that. Now watch this. The first thing the uncle said, this were his words. Man, you need a chemist. Man, you need money. Man, they got to go into a lab to do all that. Man, you can't do that. Man, how you going to get that going? Man. And when I tell you, that's when God started speaking to me right then and there and said, this is what I mean by generational curses and how they continue to speak death. You understand what I'm saying? And my homeboy, when I tell you that his, the morale went down and I learned a valuable lesson. See, I experienced that just so I can give you this message right now. His whole, that he crushed it. He snuffed the life out of my friend. Just like that. And that's why my friend keep moving in that same cycle of frustrate, silent frustration. Don't know how to get out. Because you got to understand, everybody's not strong. And everybody's not strong spiritually. You understand what I'm saying? This is why God raised up certain people. Because everybody can't handle that fire. See, everybody's not built to be able to go through that fire to bring everybody out. God has the people that he anoint and appoint. And that's why I said, when you are the uh, gen when you are the one that's supposed to break that generational curse, it's like that witchcraft, that stuff within your family. It's that it's like witchcraft is like that. It's, it's holding people, keeping them bind to something. You understand what I'm saying? There are some of you that are appointed and anointed to be able to break it, but that's why it's so hard for you. It's like, like you, like I say, it's like you still spinning your tires, but see, that's why I say, well, God, God, the more you, the more your relationship grow with God, the more you learn and you start using your spiritual gifts. Let me tell you another thing. You believing in God does not stop attacks. The reason why you get attacked is because your belief in God. See, some people think, well, as long as I believe in God and have faith. No, babe, there's, you have, look, that's when you're going to learn about your spiritual gifts. See, in order to fight something, you have to know what's attacking you. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Let me tell you this. You can work hard all you want to. You can have the faith and you could be putting in the work. But a lot. listen, watch my last video. Look at how many people commenting on that video. You can have faith and work hard all you want. 
But you will be running in that same old cycle if you don't know how to pray against it. See, when I was younger, I didn't know how to pray against it. And I knew it was something spiritual because I used to tell my mom, I said, mama, something ain't right. Because every time I'm trying to do something, it's like it's just saying it's not connected. And we'll be stuck in that mentality to believe where it just ain't meant. That's not true. When I started, listen, when I met my spiritual father, the one at one night when I went to church, he, he prayed and prophesied over me. He said, you have a lot of hindering spirits around you. But see, by then I was old enough and I knew that though. I was about 25. See, I knew it then and that's all the confirmation I needed. And he told me, he said, continue to fight, fight. And guess what I did? I started praying against it. I started calling it out. I started walking around my house and started, started speaking all of that stuff out of my life, out of my family, out of my home, all, all, away from me. That's how you got it. That's how you break free. You can't break free from something if you don't know what it is. So, of course, you're going to settle on. Oh, it just wasn't meant for me. How like, come on now. You think you're going to go through all your life and ain't nothing meant for you. Think about it. Everything ain't meant for you. That's what we settle on because we don't know nothing else. We, we can't figure it out. But a lot of times it is that generational curse, that hindering spirit that is attached to your family, that is trying to keep everybody in bondage. Come on now. This is why God told us to speak life. You see, even God come to tell you what he say. His plans is to prosper you and give you life. So if it's, if it's, if God's desire is to give you life, then why you think you keep living in death? Woo because something is coming against you and I'm trying to tell you how to get out. So let me say this. They're not just negative people, these family members or these people on your job. Like I said, I'm dealing with the family right now. They're not just negative people. The enemy has convinced them and paralyzed them that nothing will ever change. How do I know? I've seen it with my own family. When I used to pursue music, my daddy didn't believe that somebody could ever make it or ever do anything or have a, a big platform. See, it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. But God did a full circle in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Because I gave my life to Christ. And that's why you see me where I am now. See, where I am now, I always knew I was going to be here. I just didn't know in what way. But that's because I kept fighting. The reason why you see Diamond Rock, because she kept fighting. But if I were to listen to my daddy, because at that time, he didn't have the knowledge like he have now. He was convinced that nothing could happen. You know what I'm saying? That's that curse. But you, this is why I tell y'all, y'all got to be quiet. The reason why you got to be quiet is because they will talk you out of it because the devil has convinced them that nothing good could ever happen for you or for him or for her or for the family. They are convinced. So you have to be quiet because what you're doing, what, what you and God are doing in silence is going to prove them wrong. See, they think they stuck. And if you keep talking to them about what you're trying to do, they're going to make you think that you're stuck. So that's why I say be quiet so you can show them that we're not as stuck as you think we are. You get what I'm saying? That's why That's why you be quiet. So they don't talk you out of it. You got to prove them wrong because you are the one to break these generational curses. You are the one that God is going to use to prove them wrong. That you have been, you have been manipulated by, by Satan the whole time. God ain't, we ain't never stuck when God is our father. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody's stuck when we with God. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to close on this right here. I want you to catch these diamonds. When you, when they see you and they see that you're thriving and you're making it, what you're doing is you're instilling hope and life back into them because you're doing something that they just knew it could not happen. You see what I'm saying? It's going to be like that time, like with Joseph in the Bible, when, uh, when this family, they was going through that famine and he came in contact with his family again for shelter and for food. See what God did. He set Joseph up, Joseph up in position. And that's why a lot of y'all have to go ahead of y'all family. Everything that y'all go through, you're going ahead of them because God has arrangements to set you up so that they can live and have new life through what he did in your life. Catch them diamonds now. <laughs>